information. You can reach me in the summer if you have questions about placement. Mr. Corman and Mr. Englishman are the building leadership at Valley View, our principal and our assistant principal, and they will be doing the scheduling. So once we get the placements uh, completed, then you will be contacting them if you have any questions about your schedule. And then Mrs. Kane and Mrs. McDonald are our school counselors, and your school counselor is assigned based upon your last name. So if your last name is A through KI, you're going to be assigned to Mrs. Kane. And if your last name is KL through Z, it will be Mrs. McDonald. All of our sixth graders take uh, a set of courses and most of them are the same. So all of our students will take English language arts for the full year, math, science, and social studies. They will split their world language. One half of the year will be Spanish. The other half of the year will be French. They will all take PE and health. It's three quarters of PE and equivalent of one quarter of health. And they all have a course called Art of Writing, which meets every other on an A-B schedule. And then the students will have an option to take some electives. Those asterisks uh, indicate which of our courses are multi-level, and those are the ones that we are making our placements for. The electives, the students have an opportunity to rank their choices, and then we do our best to fulfill their first and second and choices. For our ELA and our math courses, there are three levels of each. Our ELA program has a core level, an advanced, and an accelerated. About 70% of our students are enrolled in our core. And our core, I will go over what is in each of the courses, but our core classes include uh, all sixth grade content materials. So even if it's a different setting, if they're in a resource class, uh, so it's just a different setting, it's still the same core information. It's sixth grade material. And we have our advanced, about 20% of our students. Our accelerated is about 10% of our students. With our math, same percentages, but our core is about 70%. Advanced is about 20% and our pre-algebra course is about 10%. What is the differences between, difference between the levels? So for math, the core level of math is sixth grade content and it's aligned to the sixth grade standards that are set by our state and they are generally smaller class sizes. The advanced math class skips half of the sixth grade content. So it will not be covered. It was not covered in fifth grade. It would not be, these students would not cover that material. It covers the second half of sixth grade and it begins the pre-algebra, the first half of pre-algebra, which is seventh grade content. Those in the pre-algebra class will skip all of the sixth grade content. So they will not get any of that information. Although they will be expected, all of these classes will be expected to take the sixth grade NJSLA assessment at the end of the year but they will skip that material and they will take pre-algebra content. For our English language arts courses, the core classes are the grade level content what majority of our sixth graders will take and they are that course is aligned to the sixth grade standards. The advanced ELA is still the same sixth grade content. It moves at an accelerated pace and the novels are at a seventh and eighth grade reading level. The accelerated class is also sixth grade content, but again, at an accelerated pace, but there are higher expectations for additional writing. So they need to be able to write independently for very rigorous and longer amounts of time. And they also read novels at seventh and eighth grade reading level. So how we decide which course is best for your child. We take several pieces of criteria information and put them together and look to see what would be the very best fit. Because what we're looking for is the best fit for your child for the next three years that will prepare them for their high school courses. None of these classes are in a set pathway where they could not, you could not move between levels. And we need to make sure that they are ready uh, for ninth grade courses. Now ninth grade has ninth grade English language arts, which is its own course. And, that has its own content and it's not, uh, it's just a building on of what the standards are for eighth grade. The math is algebra. In algebra, 
um, the students need to be ready for that class. So if they have not taken algebra at the middle school level, that's where we're trying to get our students to. And the majority of the majority of the students uh, will take algebra as a ninth grader. I need to stop sharing for one moment. I think someone might be presenting. They may have uh, taken the screen. You can just make sure that your presenting is off and that your mics are off. Seth, can you turn on your mic for one moment, please? I'm going to make sure you guys can see the presentation. Yes, Sandy, I'm here. OK, I want to make sure. It clicked off my presentation, so I want to see. I'm going to go back. Can you keep your mic? Um, I'm going to share again, and I'm going to go back to any slides that I may have missed. So okay. can you keep your mic on for just one moment, Seth. Okay. Sure, you got it. Go back. Were we able to see this slide? Uh, it's, it's coming up now. Just give us one second, Dr. Carlson. Okay. Uh, we did see the, the uh, course level slide, yes, where it was in green and blue. Um, and we saw that slide. We were on the next one. This one? And then okay. you need to put your um, slideshow into presentation mode. There we go. There Are we go. go. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh. Now I'm Keep back going through now. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I, uh, I'm going to grab my... That one. Right oh, there. there we go. Okay, so we're back to placement. So again, we're trying to find the very best placement for your child. We do take many factors into play when we're making this decision. We take it very seriously because we do want to set them up for success. And we want to make sure they're not overwhelmed, but they are uh, academically challenged where they're at. So for ELA, we're going to look at your reading level. So if you recall on the last report card that you had, uh, you have a reading level of where your child is. All of the students will be getting one more final reading level assessment with their teacher. And that's the reading level that we will look at. Where are they ending? Majority of the students are somewhere uh, between fourth grade on the, all the way up to eighth grade reading levels. Eighth grade is a reading level. So somewhere in that mix, your child is in that range. And we'll be looking for what would be the best placement based on their reading. We also have the teacher recommendation. The, child, the teacher has been with your child uh, for at least through March and knows your child the, the best and can tell us more than what numbers can tell us. So they're going to talk to us about what would be the best place uh, for your child when it comes to work habits and socialization and the content. We also have a survey, it's called a Renzulli survey and it looks at work habits. So the teacher also completes that. So teacher input is the recommendation where they actually decide and say, I think your child would be best in core, advanced, or pre-algebra or accelerated. And then they also complete a form where they are using a scale, which I'm going to show you in a few moments, about your work habits, about your child's work habits. And then finally, there is a reading comprehension and writing assessment that will be taking place, and I'll give you the dates for those as well. So we take the test score. We'll take their work habits, the teacher recommendation, and the reading level. We look at all of those pieces. We put every grade, every student in the grade level on a spreadsheet, and then we look to see where the natural breaks are. It typically comes out to be the top 10% for the pre-algebra or accelerated. 20% will go into advanced, and most of the students will go into our core sixth grade uh, courses. For math, we use the student proficiency on the standards, which is our freckle. So your students have been working on freckle at home. They have between now and June to continue working on their freckle. The more they work on that, the farther they get on the standards. So there's standard uh, assignments, assessments that they do, and they just keep working through those assessments, and they are it determines where they are uh, on the state standards. The teacher recommendation again, the work habits survey, and then there is also a math assessment that we look at. 
The math assessment takes place over three parts. They are uh, between 18 questions and 25 questions. So they are not long assessments. However, there are, they are, each part is important. The first part, part one and part two are all required. So part one really covers fifth grade material. So we get an idea of how well they have done on the fifth grade material for this year, taking into consideration uh, that we, some of the material has dropped off since March. So the part one will be over fifth grade material. Part two is over the sixth grade material that they would skip if they went into the advanced class. So intuitively every year students really have mathematical grasp of content and are able to do well on those assessments, even though we've never covered that material in fifth grade at all. And then finally, the third part of the test is completely optional. That, is, that section is for students who are interested in taking the pre-algebra course. So after this presentation, if it looks like that's something you want your child to consider, then you would want them to take that part three test. And I'm going to give you all the dates for those. So here are our placement tests. So starting on Thursday, May 28th, all of our tests begin at 10 a.m. They will be virtually through OnCourse. OnCourse is the program that we use for assessments during the school year. So your children have been taking them fourth grade and then again this year through fifth grade on OnCourse. So they know how to use the platform. Your fifth grade teachers will put that in the link in their Google Classroom. The students will log on and then they will have the opportunity to complete that test at that time. If the child is not available or able to take the test at that time, we do have makeup sessions and we will make arrangements. We don't want anyone to miss the test. So if for any reason the child, your child cannot get on, they have difficulty getting on, uh, they need to, they're gonna be gone that day or they're sick, just email us and we will make sure they get the test. That's not a problem. But the first one is on May 28th. It's at 10 o'clock. It's open for two hours. The student should not need to take that. They probably will take less than 40 minutes. However, we have a large window open to make sure that we're giving everyone the time they need. Any student that gets an extended time has even longer and is already programmed into the on course as it is when they take NJSLA or any other assessments. So extended time is afforded as well as any accommodation they would receive in their IEP, from their IEP. The math part one test is on June 1st at 10 a.m. The math part two test is Wednesday at 10 a.m. June 3rd. And then the final one is part three. It's optional. You do not need to log on if you do not want to be considered for the pre-algebra class. However, if you do, please join us Friday, June 5th at 10 o'clock. Again, we have extended these testing times to be extremely long, way longer than any student probably will need. Um, but we want to make sure that everybody has enough time. The Renzulli checklist, so that work habit survey that I mentioned, these are the work habits that your teacher is going to be scoring your child on. So they're gonna look at problem solving. Do they demonstrate risk taking? Do they see patterns and relationships? Do they use multiple approaches independently? So all of these items, they're going to be giving a score of zero to three. How often? Because it's behavior. So behaviors are, measured by how frequently the student exhibits the behavior. So it will go through, they'll go through each of these items and indicate how often they exhibit these problem solving behaviors. They will do the same with the motivational behaviors. Do they desire to excel? Do they like leadership roles? Do they like working independently? Uh, do they produce high quality work? So motivational behaviors are, are considered as a problem. So then once we take all of those pieces, so we take the teacher recommendation, the test, the Renzulli work behaviors, and then their reading score for, uh, and their freckle score for math and the reading score for ELA, we will put them all together and then we place them in the courses. So for fifth grade ELA, there are the three levels, the core advanced accelerated, what we're looking for, Majority of the students will go into the core class, which they need to be ready, you know, we're ready for sixth grade, and they're either on or near grade level. 
if the student is not on or great on or near grade level, we do have other courses that students are eligible to take, but most of our students will go into the grade level courses. The advanced core, we're looking for about 80% on that work habits behavior and the top 80%, or top 20%, so the 80th percentile on the placement tests. Teachers would be recommending the student for the advanced class, and we would look at, at their reading level at, at at least one grade level above. For the accelerated ELA, we're looking for at least one grade level um, of reading and writing above. So the one, different, one of the differences between advanced and accelerated is that in the advanced course, we're look, that you're usually the higher readers and maybe need more instruction on writing and are accelerated are stronger in reading and writing, or in both reading and writing. Work habits are at about 90% consistently performing those behaviors and scoring 90th percentile on the placement test. The ELA is fairly straightforward to where they'll go. The math, the decision on which course to place the student in has greater implications because in the English language arts, the student may start in core and move to advanced for seventh grade. They may start in advanced and move to accelerated for seventh grade, that happens. The math, because they are distinct courses that eventually leads to the high school, could be high school courses in middle school, we do try really hard to place them and not move them as much in math. So for our math courses, we're looking for similar criteria, the 80 percentile, on the placement test, the recommendations from the teacher and on the work habits to go into the advanced class, and then the 90th percentile on all of the elements to go into the pre-algebra. After sixth grade, where do these classes go? So there are pathways, and this document is available on the website, and I will put the updated form. The only difference from last year, last year is that we are not using the NJSLA scores, so that um, will be taken off of this year's pathways that will be on the website. From sixth grade, if they are taking sixth grade core, they will likely go into seventh grade core, which is the first half of pre-algebra. Some students will go into, uh, may skip that portion and go into pre-algebra, the second half of pre-algebra. Okay, that always is that option. Our sixth grade advanced core students to move on to the pre-algebra course, which again, they've already skipped part of the material, so they're moving into pre-algebra B because they've taken pre-algebra A as a sixth grader. They have to keep a, a B or above average of grades. They are, at the end of the year, hopefully NJSLA will be back and they should be getting at least a four. So they need to be passing the NJSLA and getting a B in the class. If the student is in the pre-algebra course, they, we're looking for A's. On occasion, there's a B, but we're really looking at an A average moving on and a four at least passing the sixth grade math test to move on to seventh grade algebra one. Once they get to seventh grade, we're all in some form of algebra. So seventh grade, the core class is the first part of seventh grade algebra. The advanced class is the second part of pre-algebra, and then the Pre-algebra course moves into high school honors algebra. So that's the first high school course that we, they would be eligible for. After seventh grade, keep moving down the pathways. If they're in the core, they're gonna take the second half of the pre-algebra and be ready for high school algebra as a ninth grader. If they are, are, if they are in the advanced course, they are gonna move to high school honors algebra as an eighth grader. If they took the, the pre-algebra pathway as a sixth grader, they're gonna to move to seventh grade algebra as a as seventh grader, and they're gonna to move to geometry, honors high school geometry as an eighth grader. That means that they will have, in that pathway, they will have completed two high school courses after the, by the time that they leave Valley View. Now, our neighboring high schools, we, we prepare for going to Morris, uh, Hills Regional. I know that Morris County School of Technology also takes 
the Algebra 1 and our geometry courses. If your child is going to a private school out of the area, you would have to consult the private school to see if they are going to accept our high school Algebra 1 and our honors geometry. Our courses are the high school courses. They have to take the same finals as the high school students. They do the same curriculum. The high school teachers come down and work with our teachers and make sure that we're moving at the same pace as the high school. So everything that our students do is equivalent to the high school course. And that's why our high school course accepts that as a prerequisite. They do not get credit in the high school, on the high school transcript. However, they are assumed that they, they are prerequisites and it's assumed that they have taken it by anyone who looks at the, um, at the student's record. But students who take this pathway, I'll show you what happens for high school. So there are high school implications. Those students that take that, here's what your options are for high school. So those students that are in our core math program, grade level math, they will start with Algebra 1. And then there's different levels of Algebra 1. They may be taking uh, the CPB or CPA or you know, an honors version of that class. Those that took Algebra as a, an eighth grader would go into either Geometry or ge Honors Geometry. So those are their only two choices as a ninth grader. Those students who have taken geometry at Valley View have only one option here, and that's to take Algebra II honors as a ninth grader. So those students will be sitting in classrooms with some of their peers from ninth grade, but also juniors. So it's something to really take into consideration because at one point when you're in sixth grade, you can say, well, maybe they're ready. They could move up and take a little bit more advanced math in sixth grade. And at sixth grade level, they often can. But you have to think forward to your ninth grader, your 14 year old in a high school honors algebra two class. They cannot take regular algebra two. It's only the honors version. And they will be in with juniors taking that class, sophomores, juniors, and maybe even seniors. So just keep that in mind of where your student will be heading once they get to the high school. So those students in that pathway would be taking honors too. It's assumed that they will take four years of math uh, and then they would do pre-calculus honors and then move on to AP calculus. And you know, um, there's two levels of AP calculus, the AB and the BC. So think about where you might want your child or where your child might want to be heading. Uh, because if you are if you push them into that pathway and they weren't planning to go all the way to honors calculus or AP calculus in high school, then they do not have any courses to take at the high school. And they do have to have at least, um, you know, the three math. General questions that have come up in the past. Will you be notified of the play? When will you? Yes, the placements. You will be notified in via Genesis. So we put all this information together, we make the placements, and we inform the parents through Genesis by the end of June. You will not get the actual tests back, but we, you will receive the scores. You'll know how they placed on all of those elements. So you'll know what their placement test was, their work habit score, their reading level, which you would already know their reading level and their freckle level because you have those scores already, and also the teacher recommendation. Another question that comes up is if your child is recommended for pre-algebra, but you've decided you really don't want him to go, him or her to go down that pathway, then you just need to let us know. And we'll put them, let's say, in the advanced track because then they'll take algebra as an eighth grader and they'll be ready for geometry or honors geometry as a ninth grader. So think about that. And then you will want to get a hold of Mr. Corman or myself right away because we will start scheduling. And once the schedules are made, it's harder to move. Uh, we're a large enough school to offer a variety of courses, but we are not large enough that we have multiple sections of the same course. There's one pre-algebra class, there is one accelerated ELA class, and we want to make sure that everybody has uh, their schedules match up to their other courses that they need. 
sixth grade electives. As I mentioned before, the students will have an opportunity to select some electives. These are the electives that we offer as a sixth grader. They can take art, family and consumer science, which is the, the curriculum for that course is cooking and hand sewing, music, computers, all students will take STEM and all students will take health. So your students will get to select two of these electives. You will rank them all and then we'll try our best to get your top two choices, but we, it will again depend on their schedule what the other classes look like. Uh, so your student will have some choice and you'll take that during an elective period. Selecting your cycle classes. So you'll take the four quarterly classes, which again is one quarter of health, one quarter of STEM that everyone takes, and then you'll have your two choice electives. You'll have an opportunity to rank your choices in June. Mr. Corman will send you uh, by a Google form and you will have an opportunity to rank your choices and then submit and we'll start on those schedules. If your child is in Expo, which at this point you don't know because we're just starting to do those identifications, but if your student is notified that they are eligible for Expo, they will take three quarters of Expo and one quarter of Health. They do not take any of the other electives that are on the list. So they will have to select. We do have some students who are identified as being eligible, eligible for Expo and then choose not to take it. Maybe they've done Expo for a few years and they've decided they want to take electives as a sixth grader. That is perfectly fine. You can let us know. And you can go into your electives for sixth grade. Let's say in seventh grade you decide you want your child to go back into Expo, you can. There's no reassessment. Once you're eligible, you're eligible. So students you have the opportunity to move between taking Expo, but it's for the whole school year. And then um, you move into um, electives, you can do that either the next year or you can swap it out. Sixth grade, take electives and take Expo in the future if you, if you choose to. Expo is an everyday course at Valley View. So additional information. I mentioned this above that they're taking a mix of French and a mix of Spanish. So all students take a half a year of French and a half of a year of Spanish. And at the end of the year, they're going to have an opportunity to choose what they're going to take for seventh and eighth grade. They will select either French for the next two years or they will select Spanish for the next two years. And we do go all the way up to high school French too uh, at, at Valley View. We have seven high school courses. We have French one, French two, Spanish one, Spanish two, algebra, geometry, and biology. So we do have a number of high school courses that are available. But the only one that's, um, None are available as a sixth grader, but the only one that you're kind of preparing for as a sixth grader would be the pre-algebra class. Band lessons do play, take place during the regular school day, uh, and the whole band meets after school. Chorus meets after school. String ensemble meets after school. Band and chorus are listed on the report card as a 10th period, but all students are graded with a P. So if you're enrolled in that course, you get a pass for that. But this way, it on your student's record, it acknowledges that they have taken a full year or you know, however long they stay in the program, uh, maybe a semester or a year of band or chorus, so additional mass, math, excuse me, music courses. Okay. I'm gonna show the next slide and then we'll go back. I'm gonna stop sharing and we'll do question and answer. Next Wednesday is our next sixth grade presentation. So that's parent orientation. You have the login and Mr. Corman, Mr. Englishman will be presenting a lot of very useful information. Information the parents and students really wanna know, like how do you get in your lockers? So we will have more information uh, about the middle school entirety and as well as courses. So if you have any questions that you think of after tonight, you certainly can email me or you can ask next week. I'm stopping. Okay. Okay. Go to. I have some questions. I had a question about the NJSLA. Since it's canceled, how is it going to be used in the placement? So this year we are not. So we did change that, and in its place we for. 
uh, the proficiency of standards, we're using the Freckle program, which measures all standards. So there's five domains of standards. Your student, student is working on them now, and that's one area they can work on between now and June, the next two weeks, they can continue to work on that, and they can continue to move that score up uh, the next few weeks. Students who are not currently enrolled in the Denville district, which I know there are a few people on our presentation tonight, we will communicate separately, but I do take your information from your school and we have a way that you can log on to our assessments from an external source. Uh, I apologize, if, my, if I said 6.30, it is six o'clock. Six o'clock is the presentation for next week. Expo is our is our gifted and talented program. So students who are identified for that program, uh, it Valley View take the class in lieu of electives and it meets every day. And it's a project-based uh, collaborative uh, program to accelerate. Really, it's more about collaborative work and collaborative thinking to push problem-solving skills. It does not accelerate students in the content area. That is why we have the accelerated English language arts and math program. If students are excelling in math, they're going to want to look at the content classes more than Expo because Expo does not cover specific content that would accelerate them into a higher math course. I would say the orientation is probably very similar. There may be some new things. If you have students at Valley View, the orientation will be similar to what we've done in the past, but there may be some new things that uh, are new for Mr. Corman and Mr. Corman. The question is, can I talk about the biology program? The biology program is for our eighth grade population. So students, it is also a high school course and they will completely skip eighth grade science. It is not an advanced eighth grade science. Students do apply for the program. They do an assessment to get in and about, we've had it four years now and there's about 15 students, 14 or 15 students that are eligible for that course. It is an honors biology class. So once the students get to the end of seventh grade, they take an assessment, again, recommendations, work habits, we look at their grades because then once they're at Valley View, we have grades and then we determine which students are eligible for that program. Kids in the biology program give up their recess as well three days a week because it's a lab course. Uh, for ELA, one of the metrics was reading level. Third marking period report card did not assess or mark the reading level. You can look at your second marking period reading level, but between now and June, your teacher will be giving them an updated reading level. If they Second marking period, they were reading higher than where they are now just because of slippage. We certainly would use the higher reading level to look at, at between which is higher. The placement tests, you will get notification on your child's Google Classroom. Uh, I have given you the dates and the times, and so the students would be logging into their on course account. They each have an on course account. And password so they'd be logging on to it and it's set it's on a timer it starts at a certain time and it shuts off in a few hours after that time unless there's ex extended time that they need it. but you need to be ready at 10 o'clock the timer does start on that uh, on those placement tests uh, we do offer uh, quite a few um, high school courses we offer a number of high school courses in the middle school the question was how, why so many we just have had that request for students in the past are really looking for those challenges. It's not all students, and it's about 10% of the students. However, we have students who want to hit the ground running and not take those prerequisite courses in high school and are really interested in going to AP Calculus as a senior. And what we we're finding in the past was it was a struggle for those kids to get to the AP levels because they were having to double up on two maths, two sciences, you know, multiple classes at one time as freshmen and sophomores in order to be able to open up their schedule to be able to take all the AP classes they wanted. So we started this seven years ago in order to open up their high school schedule. And that really is only, I mean, if you're not interested in taking and getting all the way to calculus or AP calculus, there is no hurry on this. There is no rush to get there. 
Starting in algebra as a ninth grader is what the majority of schools from our school, as well as our sending districts, the majority of the students will take ninth grade algebra. So please don't be worried if you are not taking that pre-algebra course, because it is really only meant for the students that are planning on taking calculus or AP as a senior. How will they test for Expo this year? So for Expo, we've already taken the assessment, the first part, uh, which was the COGAP. So that piece was done in February, that we're taking that piece of data as well as the teacher recommendation and uh, also looking at their work habits. So those three pieces we have in place. We're working on logistics about students who fall into that category, that is a score of 126 to 129, which in the past we've given them an opportunity to take, to take a second test called the SAGES to see if they qualify that way, if they did not qualify through the COGAT test. So we had like the safety valve where kids who did not qualify the first method had an opportunity to try an additional method to qualify for the program. And that would not be available until we get back to school. So students who, are cons who may be in that uh, range from 20, 126 of a COGAT score, which you don't have your scores back yet, they have not been mailed home, to 129 may be assigned health first quarter so that their expo would not be impacted because everybody takes health for quarter if they're in the expo program and then they would take expo the next three. So our ELA and math are on a rotating basis. They have 80 minute blocks. So they take every day they have at least 40 minutes of math or ELA, but it's a double every other day. So on an A day they may have 80 minutes of ELA and 40 minutes of math. And then on the B day, they have 40 minutes of ELA and 80 minutes of math. It just rotates back and forth. Students uh, do not need to come to the orientation next week. I surely can log on and look for their parents, but there will be a whole set of uh, sessions for our students. I know that the Builders Club at Valley View is putting together a wonderful video to send out to our fifth grade students with information from Mr. Corman and Mr. Englishman and others from the school, really just getting them acquainted to what Valley View will be like, especially from a student perspective. So even though they are not doing the tour at this time, they will get a virtual tour presented by the students. Every student will need to register for Valley View. So there is a re-registration process where uh, you will bring in, we will set dates, and you will have to bring in the same types of paperwork that you brought in for kindergarten. So there is a whole re-registration process and you'll get more information about that. Uh, okay. The COGET scores, scores are not yet available on Genesis. Uh, the delivery of them were, were delayed because we were expecting them back in March. However, I do have them now, so I'll be starting to send those out. Hopefully next week you'll be able to get your COGET score and at least see where that piece of information is for the Expo identification process. The student schedules are finalized by August. So between June and August, we're still finessing them and really getting uh, the schedule set in July, but it goes out to parents in August. At this point, we don't know if there's any additional new immunization. Maybe I'm guessing this question might be related to COVID. We are unaware of any changes in the immunization requirements at this time. So we will let you know the health department will put out what needs to happen uh, as far as that re-registration process. I do not see any other questions. So if there are still questions, I'll go back and go back up to top of the chat. I think so. so. Now some more coming in. Let me go. Dr. Back. Cullis, can I just jump in and answer oh, a question yeah. or two that I see? Yeah. Yes, please do, Mr. Berman. So someone asked about homerooms based on placement for classes. Homeroom are done randomly um, through Genesis. Um, so the students are just randomized through the computer program themselves. Um, someone also asked about band being an elective class within the day. Unfortunately, as at this time, it's not. Um, and we continue to have discussion about it, but I don't see it happening for next school year. 
um, just based off of the other courses that we offer, uh, our enrollment, the number of students in band. Um, so at this point, band will continue to be an after school program with lessons being done during the day. Thank you, Mr. Corman. Yep, and some of this information will also be covered next week during the uh, fifth grade parent orientation. Um, because of this unique situation, we've never had to have this so, so much overlap. Um, so uh, a lot of these questions will be addressed again next week, so. True, usually in the live, both Mr. Corman and I are standing there just sharing information at the same time. Uh, we, I see there's a lot of information, uh, questions about the health requirements. So let's, we will make sure we have all that information for the orientation next week about some questions about which immunizations in general are needed for like the 12 year old immunizations for sixth grade. We'll make sure we have all that and the pediatrician forms um, and the sports physical. So we'll get all that information to do with the health related from the health office. And Mr. Corman, can you uh, include that in your presentation next week, which probably you already, already were going yep. to. Yeah, I'm in and contact we'll with the nurse. So either she'll be part of it or she'll share the information with me and I'll make sure it's part of the presentation. Great, thank you. Uh, there was a question about the assessment tests, if they're formal tests. Uh, they are not, the, the math tests are part of our actual math program. So they're, they have, the fifth graders have been using Envision all year and they took a assessment in September, they took assessment on it in uh, January and they're taking the third, like a, a follow-up norm, which would normally we do as a benchmark anyway. And so it is a commercial test, it's from Envision. However, it's not one that, uh, it's not like a standardized test. It's through our, our, just our regular text program. The second part of the test is one that we have created. Uh, the pre-algebra pre-assessments are our own where our algebra teachers have gone through and selected which items they felt were necessary. And we've been pretty successful. We really do, like I said, this is our seventh, this will be our eighth, again, it'll be our seventh group that will take pre-algebra in the fall. So we have a lot of data from the last few years to look at which students were successful and were on the right path for taking that course and where they went. I tracked them all the way through high school. Like, where did they end up? Which courses did they take? I looked to see, did they get A's in those courses, B's, were they struggling in those courses? So that we can finesse our, our recommendation plan. And the last thing I want is to set up a student thinking they were on a path, and then they struggle when they get to the high school because they, you know, they may be in a level that wasn't appropriate for them. Because I think if you look at research on algebra, you can actually take algebra too early. Some students are just not developmentally ready for algebra in the middle school, but they will be in ninth grade, so it's fine. Um, it's perfectly fine that they take that. I mean, that's what majority of the students do. That's typical route. I think that's what a lot of us did. Uh, so it's not any, you know, there's no reason why we wouldn't say they should have to take it before that. But there are students that are developmentally ready, so that is why we offer that. And at 10, okay, if a student is not logged in at 10 on the dot, does that mean they'll not be able to access it? No, they will be able to access it. It just means that the time would be cut short. But, but I do uh, know that the time is, is long. So they should have enough time to finish if they had any trouble logging in. If for whatever reason they can't get on and they need it to take it the makeup day, just email the building administrator, myself, reach out to someone, the teacher, and we'll make sure that they can take it on the makeup day. It doesn't shut down. It does shut down at the end of the time, but it doesn't block them from logging in. The system knows if your child gets extra time because if they get time in their IEP, we already program that in. So all the students who have that extended time or 504s uh, as well, they get extended time, we program it that way. So there's actually a button that we can push and we can change the time for the, any amount of time that the student is allowed based upon their uh, IEP or 504. But uh, we have left about two hours for the assessment and it should not, it's, in the past students would take about 40 minutes for the ELA test and they take uh, about we, mm, 60 minutes for the math sections, about the typical students.
Any additional questions? Well, I really appreciate the turnout tonight. I'll stay on for a little while longer. Uh, this will be available. It is recorded, so I will finalize the copy and make that available on the website. And that way you can go back, or if your friends were not able to attend tonight, please let them know that this is available for them to review the course placement information. So thank you again. Mr. Carmen, do you have anything that you would like to add? No, nope, um, just hope that you can make the orientation uh, next week as well. All right, thank you all, have a good night. Dr. Collis, if you're still here, I had one other question. Oh, I love this short, it's so cute. Uh, Miss Nagel? Miss Nagel? Hi, I'm here, Mrs. Nagel, I'm here. Hi, this is uh, Seth Corman, the principal. So I saw your question. Uh, I don't I think Dr. Wanna, I didn't wanna I, ask in front of everybody because I don't wanna um, you know, infer what people no, might no be doing. No problem. So we, we definitely have had this conversation and Dr. Cullis, I know her picture is still up, but I think that's from her other computer because she okay. has to use two computers to do the presentation. But um, understand that we understand completely that there could be some parents that are very forthcoming and helping let's put it that way i'll try to I, say it so you know i'm a teacher which is where that question comes from yeah so. I, I get it and as you know in the end it won't benefit them so yeah, when okay. they get into the class when they do get into the class we'll see that and what happens okay. is we we will make movement at that point as well um oh, you would. dr yeah, Dr. Cullis talked about the movement up. We also yeah. have made the adjustment in other in other direction. Um, it's very rare because yeah, they sure. use so much data to, to get to that point, but we have made that movement in the other direction when we had to. It's a okay. hard conversation, as you know, but it's also what's best for the kids. So I was just kind of curious. Yeah. You know, I teach over in Rockway Township, so we've had a lot of discussions about that as well. Where so do you I teach? Just, I live in Rockway. I teach at Dwyer. Oh, okay. My kids go to Stony Brook. We're the no wall school. <laughs> yes, I know. 
Yeah. So no. I just, I was like curious, like the professional side of me couldn't help but ask. So no problem. So that's where we are, and that's what our conversations have been. Sorry, sorry, I'm still here. I was asking about preventative measures for helpful parents. Yeah. So, Dr. Kosh, you're muted there. You're muted, Dr. 